The United States has 11 aircraft carriers, the largest fleet of aircraft carriers in the world, all of which are nuclear powered. Even the oldest of them, the Nimitz, which was launched almost 55 years ago, is larger than any other country's aircraft carrier. This demonstrates the military power of the United States and its dominant position in the world's oceans. The Gerald R. Ford is the last third-generation aircraft carrier with the tail number CVN-78, sometimes referred to as a supercarrier because of its power. In this video, we look at why Gerald Ford is needed, especially given its cost of nearly $18 billion three times more than the previous generation of aircraft carriers. Perhaps these funds could have been spent differently, for example, on building hospitals or providing housing for the homeless. We'll try to look at this issue objectively. First, let's look at the reasons that make the Gerald R. Ford a supercarrier and distinguish it from previous generation aircraft carriers, as well as where nearly 14 billion in US tax dollars were spent. Although the appearance of Gerald Ford and the Nimitz is similar, comparing their silhouettes, some differences can be seen. For example, the wheelhouse on the Gerald Ford is located closer to the stern and the bridge is not visible. This reduces the size of the superstructure because the wheelhouse is located on the lower deck. As a result, the deck has become more spacious. However, this is not the reason why CVN-78 costs twice as much as any other aircraft carrier. The main reason is its equipment. Let's start with the most important part of the ship, its engine. The Gerald Ford is powered by a nuclear engine, but these reactors are different from the previous ones. The ship has two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, which are more efficient than the previously used Westinghouse A4W. They're more powerful, 700 megawatts compared to 550 megawatts, which is almost a third more power. These two Bechtel A1B reactors provide 1400 megawatts of energy compared to 1,100 megawatts of the two Westinghouse A4W reactors. This 300 megawatts allowed the abandonment of the four steam turbines and diesel engines of the Nimitz aircraft carriers, as 1,100 megawatts was not enough for such a giant weighing more than 100,000 tons, but 1,400 megawatts is more than enough, even to power the laser weapons the ship plans to receive in the future. In addition, the new reactors have even more advantages. They're designed to operate for 50 years and do not require periodic refueling, which distinguishes them from the reactors at Nimitz. Compared to these reactors, which require refueling after 25 years, the maintenance process is much less hazardous, less time-consuming, and less expensive, as it requires less spending on nuclear fuel replacement. Another significant difference between Gerald Ford and the Nimitz is its use of electromagnetic catapults instead of C-13 steam catapults. This new technology allows the aircraft to accelerate more smoothly, which helps to avoid excessive stress on the aircraft structure and prevents damage. As a result of the introduction of new technologies, the number of sorties from the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carriers increased from 140 to 160 per day, and in crisis, up to 220. This is a significant number that can be compared to an additional squadron that can fight against the enemy. Even approximately 200 additional 2,000-pound bombs can be dropped on the enemy daily, thanks to each F-35C that makes up the carrier wing. In addition, the Gerald Ford is equipped with more powerful electromagnetic catapults than the Nimitz because it has three instead of four, and can carry up to 90 aircraft and helicopters, including F-18 EF Super Hornets, F-35Cs, E-2D Advanced Hawkeyes, and EA-18G Growlers, as well as MH-60 Sierra and MH-60 Seahawk helicopters. The third significant difference is the use of electronics and computers, which allowed the automation of many processes. This has reduced the labor intensity of servicing the aircraft carrier's instruments and systems by 30%, which has led to a reduction in the number of the crew by 500 to 900 people compared to Nimitz. However, this is not the final figure, as the actual number of crew required will be determined by the operation of the ship. Finally, there's another significant difference, the use of stealth technology. Although it's impossible to make an aircraft carrier completely invisible, thanks to its stealth coating, this 100,000-ton, 1,005-foot-long ship is indistinguishable from any other escort ship on cruise missile radar. This makes it difficult for the enemy to determine which ship to attack. 
The implementation of all these innovations required considerable effort and financial costs. Problems arose already at the design stage, although for the first time in American shipbuilding, the ship was designed using a 3D design system that automatically detects inconsistencies. After the launch in October 2013, it took another nine years to finalize all the ship's systems. This also applies to weapons elevators, electromagnetic catapults, and human waste disposal systems. Even radar has become a serious problem, and it was decided to develop an entirely new set for future Gerald Ford-class ships. In the report, exasperated members of the Government Oversight Board even noted that this aircraft carrier was an example of how not to build ships. Even now, not everything is perfect. In November 2022, Gerald Ford sailed to the United Kingdom at the head of a strike group of ships to the Portsmouth Naval Base. The new ship was assigned to the U.S. Second Fleet, which was responsible for the North Atlantic Ocean. Apart from the aircraft carrier, the strike group of ships included the Ticonderoga-class missile cruiser Normandy, the Ohio-class nuclear-powered submarine, three Arleigh Burke-class destroyers named Ramage, McFall, and Thomas Hudner, the Legend-class Coast Guard destroyer Hamilton, the USS Joshua Humphreys tanker, and the Robert E. Peary dry cargo ship. Unfortunately, the available data showed that the aircraft carrier did not use its entire aviation wing of 90 airplanes and helicopters, probably due to the fact that the ship has not been fully certified. In particular, only five of the 11 electromagnetically driven cargo elevators have received certificates of fitness, while the rest have been recently repaired and are being tested, although they're used to move military cargo more than 20 times a day. Now let's move on to the question posed at the beginning of the video. Is there a need for such an expensive and problematic ship? Wouldn't it be better to spend the $18 billion on more pressing needs? But our answer to this question is that we believe this money was well spent. Unfortunately, our world is far from ideal. And there's a lot of violence, both in the past and in the world today. As it was thousands of years ago, the formula, if you want peace, prepare for war, remains true. If you don't feed your army, you'll have to feed the enemies. America is by far the most powerful country in the world, which allows it to dictate its will to other countries and establish rules that favor the United States above all else. Of course, some people don't like that. America is increasingly facing a challenge from China, which is being helped by Russia. China has a greater military potential than the United States, and if China becomes a world leader and the yuan replaces the dollar as the world currency, it will significantly reduce the standard of living of Americans. That's why the Gerald Ford aircraft carrier is such an important weapon that will allow the United States to protect its leadership. The construction of other aircraft carriers of the same class, such as the USS John F. Kennedy in 2024, the USS Enterprise in 2028, and the USS Doris Miller in 2032, is essential to maintaining the strength of the U.S. military. Doris Miller, although not a president, was a Navy Cross recipient as the first African American. While some experts criticize floating airfields as obsolete in the age of hypersonic missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles, most military analysts believe that aircraft carriers remain essential to the U.S. Navy and that it's important to keep them up to date with new strike and defensive technologies. What do you think of the third generation of aircraft carriers? Do you think that the cost of these carriers is justified, or can the money be spent more efficiently? Please share your comments below this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss new interesting videos.